a mother wrote me who has studied the ridiculously effective parenting training. She said, quote, the master bathroom toilet doesn't stop trying to fill up the t tank. It keeps running because the sensor that indicates the tank is full doesn't work. The reaction of my husband, who always tries to do as little as possible, uh, is simply to turn off the water supply to the toilet. <laughs> That's clever. Which means we have to turn it on and back off with every use, which gets inconvenient. I decided to ask my son, Julian, only 12 years old, to research the problem and see if it could be fixed. That's brilliant of you. Most kids leave home not knowing how to do, frankly, anything. Cook, clean, wash clothes, iron, fix the simplest things. They're just helpless. My children have told me this many times about the friends that they've met. And those kids act like uneducated and helpless morons, regrettably, the rest of their lives, always asking for help and then complaining when other people won't help them. It's really not a great way to live. You're teaching your son how to succeed in life, and competence is one of those things. And the teaching never stops. You teach as many lessons in life as you can. How to fix a toilet is just one of many. Mom continues, I gave Julian the job this morning. Immediately, he was upset about it. He didn't say anything with words, but his face showed it. He didn't like being assigned this job. I held up my hand like this, like stop, like you recommended, and said, stop and think and listen. Now, mom, this is mom still speaking. She said, I found myself speaking very slowly and deliberately like you do. <laughs> She said to him, I'm asking you to take a look at it and to learn about it and see if you can fix it. I'm not telling you that it has to be done immediately or by tonight. Just investigate and learn how. Well, his face was still upset. So he's been working at it. This morning, my husband said that he would pick up the broken part from the hardware store after work. And I said, no, I'll, I'll take it. Julian to the hardware store. I didn't have confidence that my husband would get the job done because he always does as little as possible. He would have come home and said, nah, they don't have it. And it wouldn't have been effective because your husband always does do the least and he doesn't really care if it's fixed right. And that teaches Julian that he can just go out, ah, can't be done, and he quits. Mom says, and I also wanted Julian to learn to do it himself, find the part, everything. When I spoke with Julian later in the day, he said, I thought Papa was going to pick up the part from the hardware store. Now, me to mom, I'm sure you've noticed he's already arguing. He wanted his father to just get the right part, even though he didn't know the right part, so that Julian would have to do less. That's always the theme. When kids ask questions about a job, it's how can I do less? When you say clean the living room, well, does that include the questions always about doing less? Stop him right there. As soon as he says, as soon as any child says, well, I thought it's the same as him saying, but I'm right. Or, but I want to do the least possible. Children never say, well, but I thought you wanted me to do much more than that. And I've already done it. I thought you meant clean the whole house and wax the car And while I was at it. No, it's always about less. So mom says, no, Papa didn't get the part. Julian said, well, he said he would. Mom said, I want you to deal with it. Julian says, but Papa said, now remember what I talked about. Mom was brilliant and said, stop. Because when a child's given an instruction and then says, but, it's always about doing less. Good for you, mom. When you give him a job, it's almost always some version of I thought or but. And the questions are always about doing less. It's never about doing more. And you stopped him. Brilliant. Mom says to me, it doesn't really matter what Papa said. And mom says to Julian, what matters is that I told you that I want you to deal with it. Now, she's not mad. She's saying it in this tone. Julian had only looked at a video of how to replace the part that my husband had described as being broken. Just a couple of videos, and he settled on one part. He, he didn't know it was the right part. He was trying to do as little as possible. 
So, Mom, it was wise of you to have Julian pursue it because it's so unlikely that your husband would even identify the correct part or what was broken. Mom continues. Um, so, he only thought of going uh, to the hardware store to get the part. I told him he was going to do the easy thing, go to the hardware store, not find the part, and then come home and go, impossible. This is Mom talking to me. Mom says to me, I told him to do more research, to investigate it until he figured it out. And then I left for a couple of hours. This is very smart on mom's part, not come back in five minutes and look over his shoulder. Two hours later, I came back and mom says, Julian had fixed the toilet, not just researched it, fixed it. He'd actually looked at it. He looked at it more closely. He Googled the precise symptoms of the problem. If you Google's getting amazing at that. Um, fix, leaking, whatever. And it'll give you suggestions that often don't involve getting parts and other things. Then he found someone on YouTube, this 12-year-old kid, who suggested just taking this part out, rinsing it, cleaning it, and putting it back. He did. And poof, the problem was solved no trip to the hardware store, no money spent, and really pretty quick. This is very cool. Now, to mom, you have had a tendency to point out how Julian was unloving and selfish and always trying to do less. Understandable, because in the past, you never pointed out anything. And yes, he does need to learn about those things, but now you have a golden opportunity to teach him something different and equally important, you get to gush all over him. Really, it's time. It's time for him to hear it. It's time for you to learn it. So you say some version of one or more of the following. I'm just giving you examples. I'm not telling you what to say. You have to fit it into what fits your personality and his. You might say, Julian, you did this. Nobody else in the family could only you did it, end quote. Oh, that's not praise. That's telling a kid, you really did something important and you were the only one. Or, quote, you contributed to making our household a more pleasant, functional place. That's a big deal, end quote. Again, not praise, feedback. Or, how does it feel to acquire a skill on your own? Ooh, valuable feedback. Or, this is impressive that you figured this out. It proves the ingenuity and persistence that are two of your gifts. How does that feel? See, we've talked about talking to children about their gifts in the training. Here's an example of it, live and in person. Or this was well done. And you'll discover that this kind of creativity and insight will serve you and other people well for the rest of your life. And on and on, I could give you lots of examples. He has to learn what it feels like to do something right. He knows too well how it feels to be sneaky, manipulative, irresponsible. He needs to get the feeling of being responsible, ingenious, creative, and persistent so he can compare the feelings. And here you are, you're the one who's going to help him compare because you're going to point out to him, this is what I mean by feedback, not praise, that this was responsible, ingenious, creative, and persistent. Now he's going, cool, this feels good, and I didn't know I could do that. Mom says, I took him aside and said, I'm really glad for him having this experience. He said it wasn't all smooth, and he admitted that he'd resisted in the beginning. And I said, yeah, I could see the, the resistance in your face. He was following his father's lead to do as little as possible, but then he did it. He looked and dug it till he solved the problem and Googled the solution. Amazing. This is mom describing him. You did a beautiful job. Now, I'm just going to add a little more and just suggest that you add a little more, like I said above. You didn't do it wrong. You did this beautifully. And you don't have to copy it exactly. Just take some of the things that I already said and add to what you said. Make him experience the feeling of having done something well. This is an opportunity for him to see what happens and how it feels when he doesn't resist when he's responsible. Mother said, I said that Papa wouldn't have made this effort to stick with it and figure it out. 
Lots of time and money get wasted by not figuring out problems, and often solutions can't be found. If you want to have a happy partnership with your wife in the future, she's telling a 12-year-old child, you must be able to listen to her, to understand her, to care about her. You have to be able to express honestly and clearly what's going on with you instead of posturing and pretending. What you're learning now as I teach you is invaluable, not just about toilets, everything I teach you, to have a happy future. This is about much more than a toilet or cutting down a tree or doing whatever job around the place. I said, this shows you can really do stuff. You can be accommodating, you can be caring, you can be responsible. And he says, the 12-year-old says, well, can't everybody do that? <clears throat> Mom said, no, they really can't. Now, from me, another thing to emphasize, when he gets older and gets a job, for example, guess, tell him, guess who they will promote? You can count on it. The guy who just gets it done. No kidding. Not the whiner, not the resistor, not the excuse maker. So nice work, Julian. He needs to see this as a stepping stone toward the rest of his life, toward happiness the rest of his life. Mom said to Julian, a year ago, you couldn't have done this you would have started crying, and he would have. He would have cried right there and fussing, and you would have given up, and you wouldn't have had faith that you could do it, and you wouldn't have acquired the skill. Do you remember when you researched stuff online and you could only find the answer that you wanted, um, and you could only find the answer that you wanted on the Internet? Uh, and he remembered. You can learn to stick with a... She was reminding him of a time that he'd found the answer to a problem on the internet. And she was saying, you can learn to stick with a problem and keep digging into it until you find the solution. And he, was said, he said that he was glad that he had learned that then and now. He smiled and he liked it. You, you, you wanna know that you're loving and teaching your children well? When they smile and like it, you know you did a pretty good job. Now, if they frown, that doesn't mean you did a bad job because sometimes they'll resist learning a good thing, even if you do it right. But this kid enjoyed this. Assess, make an assessment here. This is to mom and to everybody. He can be happy and fulfilled if he just keeps going. Whereas stopping to argue or complain just ends all learning. And you stopped the arguing and complaining. Beautiful, hooray for everybody.